If you recently purchased Soundcraft Notepad Series 5, 8FX or the 12FX USB audio interface and mixer, I would highly recommend to go to Soundcraft support website and download the latest firmware and control panel, especially for Windows 10. It was updated in June 2020. It not only fixes the installation issue of the previous version of the failed certification from Microsoft, it also had several features and few bug fixes. There are three interesting features which we can find in the driver from Soundcraft for the Notepad series. To keep the video short, I'm going to talk each of those features, the three of them, one in each video, so in three parts. In this video, I'm going to talk about the new features and the capabilities of near zero latency USB audio. But before I continue, a quick disclaimer that these videos are in no way, shape or form sponsored by Harman or Soundcraft. I have actually purchased the unit because of its features and functions available, which I have not seen in many other similar USB mixers. Now that's out of the way, once you download and install the driver and the control panel and you run it, you will see the Soundcraft USB audio control panel, as you see on the screen. The status, it will tell you what's actually connected. As you can see Notepad 5 and the current sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz. This can be changed up to 48 kilohertz, which is the supported rate. We can also look at some of the information here, available under USB streaming, currently none. The product information, and one thing you should check, make sure that your revision is version 1.09. That's the firmware, not the driver software. The driver software that you download from Soundcraft also includes a firmware upgrade feature. There will be an icon in your menu. You can run it. It will detect if it's previous version. You can upgrade it to this version. Mine says serial number 5, but I'm not sure that is correct. And that's the driver version you should see. Now the thing I'm going to talk about is the buffer setting. Input has two channels, 24 bits. And the output is two channels, 24 bits. And we can change this into 16 bits as well. If you're not sure, leave it at 24 bits. That's the highest bit rate you can set and you will need. Now another interesting thing is the ASIO buffer size. In this new version, we can select. Previously, we couldn't. Now we can actually select from 2048 samples down to 8 samples. Yes, you are seeing it right, 8 samples. Now obviously this is going to put a lot of strain on your CPU, depending on your CPU capability. Selecting 8 samples will actually get virtually near zero latency. That means any audio, like a microphone that is connected to the Notepad series will go to the USB into your DAW. You can apply effects like reverb, delay, or even if you've plugged in your guitar and you want amp simulator, you can plug it in there and you will be able to hear it with hardly any noticeable latency on your headphones. And I'm going to demonstrate and show you how that works in this video. I have the output of the Notepad mixer, the headphone output, connected to my Yamaha AG03 input. That way, you will be able to hear exactly what a person will be able to hear when they plug their headphones in. In my next video, I'm going to talk about the audio routing, followed by the next video, which will be the Dhaka. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel and hit that bell next to it, please do so that as soon as I upload the videos explaining in detail, you will be notified. But for now, we are looking at the ASIO buffer size. Now, even though we can monitor directly our microphone or our guitar plugged in or any other instrument plugged in to the mixer on our headphones with zero latency, with onboard direct monitoring, having a very low latency using the Soundcraft USB audio control panel and the driver settings, we can use plugins in our DAW and listen to them live. To demonstrate, I have Cakewalk by Banlab running in the background. 
and I have a microphone connected to the mic input of Notepad 5, the mixer. Now, because I'm also running video capture, I had to increase to 32 samples. Even though my laptop running Cakewalk at 8 samples works perfectly, but the video capture puts strain on it and there was little crackles here and there. So I thought I increase it to 32 samples, but you will still be going to be able to hear how it works with near zero latency, even at 32 samples. What you're hearing now, my microphone is my voiceover microphone connected to my Yamaha AG03. So now I'm going to turn the microphone on the actual mixer, the notepad mixer. I'm going to turn my voiceover microphone down and talk to the other microphone. You hear this microphone sounds a little bit odd and off. I want to make sure that it sounded differently to my voiceover microphone. I've turned the bass all the way down so there's no bass in there and I turned a little bit of the uh, treble up just so that you can hear the difference. So what you're hearing now is the microphone connected to Notepad 5 in a very unusual way to identify it from my voiceover microphone which is this one right here. Okay, so I've got that uh, turned down at 32 samples. So let's create a track. I want it to be Soundcraft. I want the left one because it's uh, one single channel. And I'm going to record enable and I'm going to enable input monitoring. So now we have um, our track. As you can see, it's armed to record and it also has input echo on. Now, you might hear very slight sort of phasing effect. That's because it's not, you're not only listening to the direct sound of the microphone, but you are also listening to what's coming back from Cakewalk. And let me turn this off. As you can see, now it's a bit more clearer because this is a direct sound. And what you're hearing now is both combined. And I'm going to turn the fader down of the mixer. Now you hear a little bit off because what you're hearing is exactly what's coming back from the mixer. And I'm turning the USB channel on so we can hear louder. So this is what you're hearing now is coming back from Cakewalk. To demonstrate, I'm just going to add an effect. Let's see, um, let's r add reverb. So now you can actually hear reverb on your headphones, even though there's no reverb on the Notepad 5. I personally don't feel any latency at all hearing myself through my DAW. So that's how easy it is to get effects into your listening, but we're not recording with reverb. We will still record a dry signal. So let's try to record. This is my vocal recording coming from Notepad 5. I can hear in my headphones reverb, but it should record dry. Right, so let's turn monitoring. Of course, monitoring turned off. You couldn't hear. You can see the level going up. That's because the microphone is still on, but you couldn't hear anything on your headphone. That's because this is my voiceover microphone. So let's turn it off. And let's have a look what we've recorded. There we are. I'm going to turn my reverb off. Turn the record off. And let's have a listen. This is my vocal recording coming from Notepad 5. I can hear in my headphones reverb, but it should record dry. And there we go. So as you can see how I was able to record my vocals, hear reverb while recording, but at the same time record dry and there were hardly ever, ever any latency. Very slight, so small in latency that you can't even feel it. So when you have your system set up and going, 
experiment with the buffer size and try to go as low as you can until uh, you are hearing crackles and noise. And that's due to the lot of processing power put on the CPU. You can go to the next level up. So if you're hearing lots of crackles on 16 samples, go to the 32. If you're hearing a lot on 32, go to 64. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe so you can follow up with my follow-up videos looking at the other two features in the control panel driver. Till next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, guys.